Hello, I'm Destiny Yarbrough, Destiny X, making a difference for this next generation. We are here with a special guest today that I want to introduce to you, Virginia Galloway. And Virginia is the Regional Director of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. We are going to talk to you today about involvement, your involvement, uh, responsibility to be an active participant, and how to educate voters, because it's so important. I know with our next generation, it's so important that they are educated at an early age because they are our future leaders. So tell us, Virginia, what would, what, what, can you, what would you like to share today to the viewers? Oh, well, I, I just think that God has given us such a wonderful country, and He's given us the ability in this country to take part in our government. And so we have really a solemn responsibility to do just that very thing. Uh, I know it gets a little frustrating sometimes, especially for Christian people. We have high ideals, uh, and we want to... Uh, don't want to be around things that seem unsavory at all. But this government is our government. It's a reflection of us. And so if we're not around, who is around to run the country? You have to think of it that yes. way. Uh, and so I just really want to encourage our viewers to take a very active part uh, in your local government, your state government, and even in your federal government. And you can do that in a variety of ways. Uh, but, but I just, uh, again, I want to say before God, it's just so responsible. now. Uh, I was thinking this morning, uh, my pastor loves to say, uh, you know, political activism isn't going to get you into heaven, and he is right, it's not, uh, but it can help you from living in a hell on earth, mm. like we see in many places around the globe right now. Yes. Uh, people are really suffering because good people did nothing. I think Edmund Burke had a famous quote about that, uh, that uh, we all suffer when, you know, when good people do nothing. So, yes. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. What do you feel that, you know, the word says we are commanded to pray for our leadership. We're That's commanded right. to do so. Absolutely. Touch on that a little bit. We, we do. We, we need to pray for our leaders, even those that maybe we don't like, particularly on a personal level. That really is not what God said. He didn't say pray for the leaders that you like. He said pray for your leaders. And there's a, a great reason for that. Um, we need to uh, love them and respect them. That doesn't mean we agree with everything they do. Uh, but we can certainly have an effective prayer ministry uh, for each of those people and, and also give them encouraging words when they do things well. It is difficult. I know a lot of elected leaders, and it's difficult, their position, because you can do everything right. Maybe you voted on, on 100 different bills this year, mm -hmm. and, and you voted on 99 that were really, uh, you know, just what most people want, and then one unpopular vote can sink your ship. So, right. uh, you know, we just need to be really encouraging and uh, yes. let them know that we know that they're people just like us. They're fallible people, yes. and they make mistakes, and we don't say that to them, right. but just, in other words, we just accept them right. as individuals and people, whether or not we agree with all their policies, right. and always pray for them. I, I just yes. think that's super important. And yes. also, um, you know, letting them know where we stand on the issues yes. uh, in a respectful and gentle way. Uh, a lot of times people get, especially Christian people, get mm -hmm. real indignant before they'll take mm -hmm. action. See? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of like just having a normal conversation, they wait until they really have a head of steam. Right. And then all of a sudden they blow up that head of steam on someone. Right. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's not as productive right. as, as just coming and saying, look, this is the policy that we would like to see enacted. This is why right. we want to see it enacted. There's a way to do that. Yes, yes, so. I agree. I agree. And thank you for saying that because at the end of the day, we are we all want the com the same common thing, the same common purpose. That's right. unity, mm -hmm. love. God is love, right? And to to come together and just to 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 make it a better place, a better place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that with us today, and we appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Stay tuned for our next guest.
Glow, I'm Destiny Yarbrough, Destiny X, making a difference for this next generation. I have a very special guest with me today. We are here with the beautiful Lee Valentine. Lee is a minister. She sells skin products on QVC. She's doing great things. She's a voice to the nation. She has a heart for Israel. I do know that. That's right. And I do as well. And I think that's a common denominator. Yes. She's also a TV talk show host. And I asked her as we were doing this interview, I said, what does the Holy Spirit put on your heart? I want it to be Holy Spirit led. And she said that she just feels the, the desire to pray for our nation, to pray for you, to pray for your children, to pray for your children's children, your grandchildren, and most of all, to pray for our country and our leaders. The word says we are commanded to pray for our leaders. So Lee, um, share with the viewers and with myself what you feel the Lord is saying in this hour, what He's put on your heart. It's been, it's been very dramatic in my life. Even just a few weeks ago when I was in D.C. with Ralph Reed for the Faith and Freedom Coalition, God stirred up my heart, I mean tremendously. What a great patriot we have in Dr. Ralph Reed. I mean, unbelievable. And, and I appreciate all you're doing, but let me just say this. I encourage you to get behind faith and freedom and to fight with this great man and all that he's doing, Dr. Ralph Reed. God is moving and we need to be with the people where God is truly moving because our nation is at stake. Yeah. I am a business owner and I'll tell you what, I don't want to be a socialist communist nation run by a bunch of dictators. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am praying for you that you'll get a fight in your heart like you've never had to go tell someone how to vote and who to vote for because it is very serious. I want to vote the Bible. The Bible says, thou shalt not murder. And if you're voting for someone that is against saving babies, you are committing murder. It is so wrong. Listen, no, if they're not voting according to the Bible, if they don't stand for God's principles, that is sin in our life. And we as business owners, as moms, as, uh, uh, you know, as just patriots fighting for our country, we have got to vote according to the Word of God. And I want to encourage you to get behind Ralph Reed and Faith and Freedom Coalition. Give something. And I just, I do, I pray for you and I pray for this country in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Tell the viewers how to get in touch with you. Well, if you're interested, you could call me at 1-800-798-0640. It's Lee Valentine. I have a ministry and I also have a cosmetic skincare line. Formulas that the Lord has blessed me with truly. And that's 1-800-798-0640, and I'd love to hear from you. And my website is just www.leevalentine.com, and that's L-E-I-G-H, valentine.com. I'd love to hear from all of you. God bless you. God has a plan for you. Yes, he does. Stay tuned for our next guest. This is Dr. Ed Two Rose of the Focus Life Institute and the Focus Life Program Series. I want to give you my free book today, How to Focus. It's the Focus Fulfilled Life book and workbook. And I help you identify those areas of distraction in your life and help you get focused. Can you imagine if you got focused and created a lifestyle focus? This book will get you there. Join me at 7mfocus.com. Go to our website, register, and I'll send you my free ebook of how to get focused. Because remember, your focus determines your future. Scripture therapy offers solutions to challenges individuals face every day. Scripture therapy combines faith, psychology, and life experiences to reach those seeking more in their daily walk with God. The authors, Lester and Roxanne Trichet, have blended their skills to produce a powerful book that has the potential of helping people from all kinds of backgrounds and systems of belief. The Trichets are a dynamic duo, and their book is a must-read for anyone who wants to enhance their spirituality and improve their happiness quotient on day one. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and www.scripturetherapycenter.com.
back with Dr. Ralph Reed, and Dr. Reed is just doing so much right now for the governmental kingdom. Share a little bit about what you shared today for Faith and Freedom. Well, we're uh, in the process of registering, we estimate somewhere between a million and two million new evangelical and faith-based voters. Uh, we built a voter database at Faith and Freedom of approximately 46.1 million faith-based voters nationwide. We estimate that uh, somewhere between 26 and 28 million of those will be in the states that will decide the 2020 election. We all know what those are, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, et cetera. We think Georgia is going to be one of those states. And we're going to be knocking on millions of doors and distributing 30 million voter guides in over 100,000 churches, uh, shipping out 22 million voter mail pieces that will go to people in their homes. Uh, and we'll also be reaching them online on their cell phone with text messages, on Facebook with videos. Uh, it's the most expansive and ambitious and well-funded voter education and get out the vote effort targeted at voters of faith in modern American political history. Amen. Now, Dr. Lee, what are we doing here in the great state of Georgia uh, with the new media that we're going to be uh, printing uh, moving in into the next election cycle? Well, look, it's going to be a very important election here in Georgia. They, yes. the, the, the National Democrats and the far left have now targeted Georgia three straight elections, 14, 16, and 18, and they're gonna be coming back again. Really? Uh, Did you hear that? Yeah, and it's it's gonna be serious, and it's gonna be tens of millions of dollars. I think Stacey Abrams outspent Brian Kemp roughly 50 million to 25 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was outspent roughly two to one. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's sadly gonna be the norm. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is our, our database in Georgia is about a million, it's roughly 950,000 households that we've identified are evangelical. Uh, there's between a million and a half and a million 700,000 voters in those households. That's a large we, number. We mail them, we phone them, we reach them digitally, we texted over a million of them, and, um, and they turned out. Mm -hmm. They turned out in huge numbers. In fact. Mm -hmm. Evangelical turnout, and this is according to the actual voting results. This mm -hmm. is not an exit poll from the networks. Right. We took our database, and after the election was over, we bumped it up against the Secretary of State's data on who actually voted. 87% mm. of the conservative, Bible-believing Christians in Georgia that were in our database went to the polls in a midterm election. Oh, so it was amazing. presidential level turnout. So. That's the main reason why Stacey Abrams lost. She did her job. Yes. She turned out a record number of liberal voters, minority voters. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of why she didn't concede. I think she was shocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't realize what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it again because yes. you've got the presidential race and then you've got a top tier U.S. Senate race yes. with David Perdue running for re-election. And we want to get ready for the governor's race, which is yes. only two years beyond yes. that. So. Now that Brian Kemp has signed the heartbeat bill yes. that will protect an unborn child yes. once the heartbeat Amen. can be detected, and then all these liberals in Hollywood and New York threatened to boycott Georgia and pull their films mm -hmm. out of Georgia, and he stood firm, so we've got to be there for him too. Yes. So yes. that's what we're going to do here in Georgia. Amen. Well, Dr. Reed, thank you so much. I want to thank you for all that you do for our country. Pray for our president. I know you pray for him, mm -hmm. you and your family every day, for him and his wife yeah. and his family. So I just want to thank you. It's an honor to be with you today, and thanks for all you do. Thank you. Dr. Reed, could you tell us how we as Christians that we can pray for our president? You know, I will only tell you what we pray for. We pray uh, for protection. Yes. We want to see him protected physically. We yes. also want to see him protected uh, from these vicious and baseless attacks yes. that he's subjected to yes. every single day. Yes. We pray for wisdom. Yes. I pray yes. for godly and wise advisors and counselors around yes. him. Yes, absolutely. I believe those prayers have been answered. Uh, I will tell you that um, I know because I've seen it personally 
that he has tremendous respect for Mike Pence. And uh, Mike Pence is, uh, is an MVP in that White House, and the president relies on him. And Mike Pence, uh, you know, to give him the best advice that he can possibly get. Now, ultimately, it's the president's decision, but to know that a godly man who's a full-spectrum conservative like Mike Pence, yes. the other thing we pray for is unity, yes. that there'll be unity Absolutely. within the administration because there are people who are holdovers from prior administrations mm -hmm. that do not share this president's agenda. Mm -hmm. And you can't be fighting a two-front war. You know, it's just like what Jesus said. He said a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Mm -hmm. You can't have the president trying to go this way, and then mm -hmm. you've got bureaucrats and people in the administration that are leaking to the media that are undermining him. Mm -hmm. So we pray for unity. And then finally, uh, we pray for strong marriages and families. Yes. yes. For the president, for the vice president, and all who serve them. I think most people who don't get an opportunity to see it up close have no idea the stress and the strain that these people are under. I mean, mm -hmm. they're at work mm -hmm. at 7 a.m., in some cases 6, 6 or 6.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not going home until 9 or 10 o'clock at night. These are very difficult jobs. You're under an enormous amount of stress. That can strain a marriage. And... We pray for their spouses and for their children and for their marriages. So I think those are all pretty good prayers. Yes. Well, Scripture says that if my people will humble themselves and that they will pray that, and, and turn from their wicked ways, that He would heal our land. So, Father, we just agree Amen. with Faith and Freedom, a national organization that is changing history. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. tuning in today, and we'll see you soon with our next guest. Healers from God, a devotional filled with practical yet inspirational teachings and real life experiences with real word application which will encourage the reader. Order your copy today at Amazon.com or MotivatedByLove.org. Destiny X, making a difference for this next generation, where we are covering the Faith and Freedom Coalition. And I have two special guests with me today. I have David Brandenburg and I have Fred Kittle. And they do a lot with the presidential team. They're going to share a little bit about what they do and how to get in touch with them. And I wanted them to share this beautiful magazine that I got a copy of tonight. I'm so excited. I can't wait to look through it. It looks very nice. Tell us yeah. a little bit about your organization. And well, a little bit about, about the organization. So uh, after Donald Trump was elected, there was like a lot of controversy that was kind of made up and staged. And uh, there was probably, what do you say, about a thousand volunteers for Trump in Georgia that we were all out there helping, uh, you know, helping uh, Trump. Uh, but then after that, all these people came out protesting, not my president, wearing female parts on their heads, mm -hmm. just really some really bizarre, strange stuff. So uh, a couple of the people that had a vision, uh, uh, Michael Altman, of course, you were, uh, David was in that group, Claire Harrison and different ones. So they sent out a message to all the different Trump leaders in each county. So we met in Marietta at a room at the library, pretty large room. And, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to keep this going? And so the organization uh, was formed. And basically our goal is to help ed educate, motivate, get people to participate. And one of the things that we do, of course, you'll see our logo at many events because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're team players. You know, we'll help anything that helps get the president's agenda uh, out there. But uh, David is the editor of our magazines, and he puts these out where we are, what we're doing, 
in trying to help. So do you want to say some things about that? Well, sure. That? Sure. Uh, Michael and Claire said that we need a newsletter for a president's team. And I thought, well, I've done a newsletter before. So I started one. And it was two pages. And then it grew and grew and grew until it became this magazine that we see here. And uh, you know, we try to devote about half of it to President Trump and what he's mm-hmm. doing, and the other half to what President's team is doing in our local communities. Beautiful. And part of the organizations we'd love to support, uh, Faith and Freedom, is just uh, really awesome. And, you know, without the faith-based yes. community, you know, I think we could lose this country. Uh, yes. Uh, but but with the faith and the message, and loved hearing Ralph today, and he's right. You know, we need to all work together. We need to. Uh, uh, he's going to target a lot of the faith-based community to get them registered to vote and out to vote. And there's many other organizations that we help support too that, that are doing other areas. So working together, you know, I, I really believe we'll win this thing huge. Yes. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for all that you do. And uh, I'm a big fan and a supporter as well. And I just love what you guys are doing. And thank you so much. Oh, you're, yes, you're welcome. Just a quick side note. Yes, we had talked on the Trump bus about our Read to Grow program in Bartow. Yes. And the faith base has been leading that. It was such a success. We tried it in four schools, and uh, the scores went up by like 68%. Mm. And now we're doing it in all 12 schools. And that's the faith based communities to anchor behind that. So now we're going to have between four and 500 that's volunteers wonderful. this year. And I saw yeah. you were part of the big parade. Oh, yeah. It looked like yeah, you had yeah. a great turnout yeah. for that. We did. We so did. That we were part of several parades. Yeah, I saw. But we were yeah. in four parades that day. Yeah. yeah. Well, these gentlemen do a lot. So my hat is off to both of you. Thank you for mm-hmm. your work, your contribution, your heart, what you stand for. And we just appreciate you both. Well, thank you for all you do. And you so, do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Destiny X. My story, like many others, starts with a relationship. We partied together every weekend, indulging in our own pleasures without any remorse. But our relationship was fun for a short while. After being together for some time, we decided to get married. Then I started to see him less and less. I would call, and he would not answer the phone. Later, I found out he would be in his deer camp just about every weekend. I hardly ever saw him at our house anymore, but I still wanted to give him a chance. We had a son together. I was hoping that maybe a child would give him the opportunity to be responsible and change for good, but it only made things worse. My husband got heavily addicted to drinking, and it only progressed from there on. A week after my son was born, my husband did not come home that night. I called a friend to help me find him. He was next to his favorite bar and his vehicle that he worked in passed out from too much alcohol. He would easily get angry at me and say hurtful things. He picked fights often so I would give him a reason to go out and drink. And he gave me money to shut me up so that he could remain in his addiction to alcohol and drug use. So he kept drinking and kept using. I started going to church seeking help from God. My relationship grew stronger and I started to move in the ways of the Lord. I still tried for my husband even though he hated church and didn't want to go with my son and myself. I still wanted to see the good happen for him and in him. However, there was one day that my husband had disappeared. I had no idea where he was or who he was with. I didn't hear from him for 10 days. A little later, I found out it was because he was down at his deer camp drinking and using. That was it for me. There was nothing I could do from this point on. It had been seven years since my son was born and things were only getting worse. I could no longer continue in this lie of a marriage. I have tried all that I could, but I cannot be teaching my son that a marriage like this is normal when in fact it is very dysfunctional. As a parent to my son, I owed it to my son, so I had to have a plan I sold everything. My peace of mind had to surpass any amount of possessions or money. The Lord was all I needed. My relationship with God grew out of this pain. 
He brought me my promises out of the pain by giving me a deliverance ministry. My ministry speaks to families dealing with addiction or being on the receiving end of addiction. We have a book now and are doing conferences, retreats, and we have a television show. I am happily remarried now and my son is doing great things while my husband and I are now ordained ministers doing kingdom work together and as a family. This is Ashley Harris Gronholm with Be Free Ministry. I hope you enjoy my new single, Anointed One, and book, Vessel of Mercy, A Captive Set Free, my story of how the grace, power, and mercy of Jesus Christ set me free from Mormonism. Do you need rest and refreshment in the Lord? Join us at one of our worship gatherings or retreats at Be Free Ministry Retreat Center, located in LJ, Georgia. Visit BeFreeInChristMinistry.org.